today. We're expecting God to do great things. Amen. If you would stand with us. Prepare our hearts for worship today. Let's play. 
Let there be a lifting of the voice of thanksgiving. Let there be the lifting of the voice of praise. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you this week? Do you have anything to be thankful for? He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. What a precious moment in our week and in our day to come through the gates into God's presence and glory to enter into the presence of the Lamb of God that is going to consume that city that one day after the eastern skies part. Hallelujah. And to be able to be partakers of that heavenly gift in the here and now. What a blessing. What a privilege. What an honor. What a moment. And we give God thanks and praise for that. We go to the Lord this morning as we kick off our day together believing that God is going to do great things before it's all over. He has already been with us in a mighty way. He has already spoken to us. He has already ministered to so many of us this morning from our children all the way through the adults. God is already doing wonderful things in His house today and among His people. So let's go to the Lord today in prayer. There are many needs that will be placed up on the board before you. We want to continue to remember Sister Donna Marcelli. She is recuperating and recovering from a neck surgery this week. We want to keep our bishop in prayer. He's pre- Preaching out this um, this morning in independence for Pastor Hudson. Pray that the Lord keep his hand of anointing and strength upon him. And there are many other needs. Brother Lane Miley and his son are homesick. So we said that we would pray for them. Sister Beverly Bonavillian is not well at all. In addition to the Mulligan family, the Bryan family, and the Sun family. And I know that there are needs in this house today. And we prayed this morning in the Christian education service that God was going to baptize us with a fresh spirit of revelation and a spirit of demonstration. And I'm believing that before we leave today that we are going to experience the power and the blessing of Almighty God falling upon our lives. But many times we we have to get the immediate needs out of the way and before the throne of God. So if you have a need here this morning, if there is something pressing, if there is something urgent, If there's something you cannot wait another moment, you need God to minister right now, I would invite you to come to this altar. Ministry would love to pray and partner their faith with yours. We will pray for you. If you have a need and you cannot come up or it is not comfortable for you, but you have a need, I would just ask that you signify by the lifting of your hand. And then we're going to join and lift our voices with your lifted hand. And we're going to pray and believe God to do the miraculous. Heavenly Father, right now, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord Jesus, we pray this morning over this beautiful service. We pray, Father, over your precious people, God, today. And we plead the blood and we're believing, Lord God, that every need that is brought to you in faith this morning that you're going to minister to. Lord, every family that is present, every need, every burden, every hurt, God, in every place where there is need of hope and help, I pray that your spirit would flow and fall in the name of Jesus. We pray for Bishop Marcelli and Sister Donna Marcelli this morning, Lord, that you would continue to keep them healthy and strong and continue to open up doors of purpose and anointing and God ministry in their lives and that you would let there be a touch of healing in their bodies today. We pray for the Miley family, the Bonavillian family, for Sister Beverly and Brother Lane and Drew. We pray that, Lord, you would touch them in a mighty way. For those families, God, that are in need of healing, Lord, the Bryan family, the Mulligan family, the special need in the Son family, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would minister to every need. And, Lord, for those families that are still traveling, those that are still away on holiday, we pray that you would bring them home safe and watch over them with an intent eye and with a loving embrace. We pray this morning as we offer this prayer to you in faith, believing that you will answer. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We lift our voices today and we give God thanks for what He is doing and the privilege and the opportunity of being in God's great presence this morning. 
Amen. To all of our guests, and so many are still coming into the sanctuary today. What a beautiful, beautiful moment. We want to welcome all of our guests that are with us this morning. From our heart to yours, we open up our, our, our arms and we open our hearts and we welcome you into this service at the Pentecostals of Lee Road. And why don't we take this opportunity to walk across the aisle. Let's greet one another today, excuse me, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give the Lord thanks and praise. Amen. As you make your way into the sanctuary and into your seat, it is so wonderful to be together this morning with all of you that are here today. And again, we miss those that are still traveling and those that are out of town and those that are not well. Our thoughts and our blessings are with them and upon them. I hope and pray that from Thursday night till now that everyone has had a great rest of the week. And it is certainly good again to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. If you are a first time guest today, we certainly again take this opportunity. We welcome you. We're so thankful knowing that you have a multitude of choices as it as as to where you worship or choose to worship that you would choose to be here with us this morning at the Pentecostals is a great privilege and honor and we are grateful you're here uh, you should have received a bulletin on your way in today and at the bottom of that bulletin there is a guest card if you would take a few moments of your time to complete that guest card fill it out completely on both sides and turn it in either when we receive our offering and or at the time uh, prior to leaving the building that would be be most appreciated because in the days to come we want you to know we're not only thankful now that you're here but we truly are uh, blessed that you chose to worship with us in the days to come a few brief announcements this morning uh, if this is home for you and you have not yet gotten a copy of our annual uh, calendar uh, that should be uh, accessible at any of our entrances or exits please be sure to get a copy of our annual 2018 calendar magnet take that home with you if you need more than one please feel free to take that uh, on there are specific dates throughout the year not the only dates but specific dates throughout the year that we're asking our church family to do the very best you can in calendar planning to be here for strategic services that we feel are very important for the entire body to participate in this coming Thursday night uh, let me start with Tuesday Tuesday night is our annual business Business meeting so we will have our business meeting on Tuesday and uh, it'll be at 7 p.m. for those of you that are interested in coming to that uh, we'll be reviewing our finances and kind of where we are going into the year of 2018 then on Thursday night there will be no midweek service we're on a new schedule for Thursdays being our midweek but due to Bogalusa Bible Conference and our sponsoring of that conference uh, there will be no midweek service on Thursday however tomorrow night we will have corporate prayer so this week will be a Monday Tuesday schedule so hopefully Hopefully everybody will be able to come out and be a part of that and then Friday night is the Bogalusa Bible Conference youth service so all of our youth hopefully will be in attendance so moms and dads please be sure that your child is prepared or your young person uh, is prepared to be a part of that service and if you have any questions whatsoever please get in touch with sister Kendra and or any of the youth team and then last but not least we have our uh, our pastoral chat 
which is going to be occurring on Friday night, March the 2nd. So those of you that are new to the POLR over the course of the last year, uh, if we have your contact information, etc., you will be handed or contacted with an invitation to come out Friday night, March the 2nd, to be a part of that beautiful evening. Uh, it is a low-key night. It is a time of just refreshments, food, a time of fellowship, and uh, it is always historically a wonderful time to, to meet and greet our new families and those of you that are desirous of calling the Pentecostals of Lee Road home. So if you receive one of those, you'll know what that's about. And we hope that you can make it and be a part of that wonderful evening. And then please, I just want to mention that it is important our midweek. I know we're on a new schedule. Many of us are trying to adapt to the Thursday night, uh, but it is important that we show up strong on Monday night prayer and then also our midweek service. If everybody would have been at midweek between our absentees and our presence this Thursday night, we would have been 265. Amen. Which that lets us know that that is a great, great, great size church. That is a great number. That's a great group. And right now we're, we're running uh, probably uh, just at right at about 50%. Uh, and we can do a whole lot better than that. We should be upwards of 75, 80% on a midweek service. The teachings, the, the meat of the word is powerful. Uh, and again, you won't leave disappointed. So I ask the church family, the church body, as you transition and readjust your schedule to do your very best to be here on Monday nights for prayer and for midweek on Thursday. At this time, we're going to transition into our offering. And if you would stand with me today, um, for those of you that may not have been here for Christian education, uh, we are beginning our Blessed Life series. It is a powerful series. If you have not yet watched it or been a part of it, and or if you have before, I would still strongly encourage you to come and be a part of Sunday mornings at 930 as we, uh, as we go through the Blessed Life series and as we talk about all of the dynamics of our relationship with God and what it is to have the opportunity to give in his kingdom. God is a God that wants his children to live a blessed life. God wants your life to overflow with abundance. He wants your life to be increased and multiply. I don't believe for a moment that God wants his people limping through life. That God wants us scratching and clawing for a daily meal or a daily morsel. I believe that God wants his people to live in a, in a realm of liberality, a realm of generosity. And sometimes we struggle to believe that for our own selves because of where we're living today in our current reality. But the principles of God are timeless and they are without error. And when we apply the principles of God, the promises are soon to follow because God is not a man that he should lie. And so it is that if we will apply those principles of giving God all that is holy from our house, the holy tithe, the holy offering, offerings above and beyond as we sow into the kingdom, but more than just the financial sowing of the seed, the seed of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be shocked and you will be amazed at what God wants to do when you unlock the key with your seed. Amen. So this morning we give to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your principles. And Lord, we know and understand that we can never out-prophesy the application of your principles. And so Lord, I pray today that as we bring our offering to you, as we ask that you would avouch yourself to us and us to you in return, that God, you would receive our offerings, but more than that, that you would know that our hearts are yours. I pray a blessing over this offering today, over every tithe, over every offering, over every missions giving, and over our building fund, that Lord Jesus Christ, you would bless it, the gift and giver alike, break it, multiply it, and use it for your glory, that souls may come into the kingdom of God. And everyone said amen. Praise the Lord. Let's come from the back to the front to bring our tithe, offering, etc. to the Lord today.
I told the praise team and those that were at Christian Ed this morning, I know this is a little kind of out of our norm. You, you, you don't have to get seated. I'm going to get you up in a, in a second. But one of the things that I feel so strongly in my spirit this year as a church, and I know that we have guests here and we're certainly delighted again and we honor and respect you, but as a church, I speak to us and it is of the utmost importance. We come in and we come out. This is home and we're familiar with all of the dynamics and all of the mechanics, if you will, of going through a service. But what I feel the Lord speaking and impressing upon me so heavily this year is that we follow the flow of God's Spirit. Because what God wants to do today in this service supersedes anything that we have scheduled, anything that's on an agenda, and anything that we have planned. I promise you, there's a plan. If for some reason things go a different way, there's always a plan. That's our part. That's, that's the sixth hand that, that we have to do our best to offer to God what is required on our part. But if we don't ever make way for the seventh hand, if we don't ever give way to the Spirit of God to do what He wants, if we're not careful, we'll schedule Him right out of our services. And the most important thing is that Jesus Christ shows up today and that Jesus Christ speaks, that Jesus Christ ministers, that Jesus Christ does what He wants to do because He's the only healer. He's the only deliverer. He's the only Savior. He's the only Redeemer. He's the only answer. He's the only solution. And so as we stand to our feet this morning, I've asked the praise team not to sing. And I've asked them not to go into their scheduled song. We'll, we'll do that in due time. But what I'm asking of the people of God today is that we turn this sanctuary and this altar as you feel comfortable to come forward, that we turn this into a time of prayer. And that we would begin to pray and seek God and truly ask God, Lord, what do you want to do in this service? This gives way perhaps if there is body ministry in this house today. If there is someone that you feel burdened for, someone you want to pray for. If it's searching and seeking for what it is you need God to speak to you through the word today. I just want to take time as they play and I want to release this atmosphere to the spirit of the living God. I want to ask you to get out of your seat, come to this altar, pray where you're seated or standing, but we're going to give way to the Holy Ghost, and we're going to let God begin in every service, in prayer meeting at our midweek on Thursday, we're going to give way to the Spirit to do what He wants to do, so there's no set agenda, this may turn around and only be a prayer meeting today. I don't know what God wants to do. He may heal you in the next three minutes. God may deliver you. God may lift the burden off of you. I don't know what God wants to do, but what I want to do is be sensitive to the flow of the Holy Ghost. So let's just begin all over this house, including our praise team, as they play softly. Let's just begin to pray and see what God wants to do from this point.
give God praise in this house. Thank you, Lord. Thank We're fixing to go to the Word. I'm believing and I'm prophesying that there's going to be an outpouring of God's Spirit. I'm prophesying all over this house. I take authority in the Holy Ghost over this spiritual atmosphere. I command every devil in hell to get out of this place in the name of Jesus. I prophesy liberty. I prophesy deliverance. I prophesy power and glory and anointing and favor and blessings. Hallelujah. I want us. Because the word's coming. But more than the word, the God of the word is going to follow with signs and wonders. But I want you and I to prophesy what we want to see God do for us today. God is going to do some incredible things in this house that may not be noticeable to the natural eye. But I am telling you in the Holy Ghost that God is going to show himself mightily and that we're fixing a crossover into a dimension of deliverance and liberty. There's going to be a demonstration before this day is over. But we've got to know what it is we want God to demonstrate. We've got to know what that looks like. So right now for just about 30 seconds, I want you to search your heart and begin to prophesy what it is you need God to do for you, whether it's in your marriage, your home, your finances, your health, whatever it is, I want you to speak it out loud. I want you to declare it because we're going to eat the fruit of our lips before this day is over. There's some who are going to leave this service. Your life is never going to be the same again. There's some of you that came in fearful, troubled, worry, anxious, some of you I'm telling you you're going to walk out and your whole world is going to change in its vibrancy and your view you're going to look and see the world through new eyes before you leave this house today come on let's prophesy all over this place Father Jesus Christ how we love you how we worship you my Lord and my God we give you glory and honor and praise Now, if you believe God's going to do as you spoke, clap your hands to Him. Make your way to your seats. Stay standing with me for the reading of the Word. Come on, Jesus. And I'm asking you, please don't go into sleep mode because we're not going to be long. And you and I are going to determine the distance in time between this moment and when the Holy Ghost does what God wants to do in Jesus name so I want you to be sure that you're you're listening that we're paying attention because at any moment it's going to explode in this house and the Holy Ghost is going to do something mighty turning in your Bible to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7 turning in your Bible to Revelation 3 chapter 7 not chapter 7, verse 7. Revelation 3 and 7. Amen. I love to hear the sound of pages flipping. I thank God that we have it electronically, but there is nothing like the Word of God in our hands. Amen. Nothing like the Word of the living God in our hands. Revelation chapter 3, 7 through 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, and he that hath the key of David. He, op he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, God said, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name 
unto him that is holy and him that has the key of David. And I want to minister for a few moments this morning on this subject, an open door, an open door, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord this day. An open door. Doors for all intent and purposes are, are an insignificant part of our daily lives. How much thought do we really allocate in contemplating the need, the value, and or the importance of doors in our lives? Doors, they are so common to you and I that for the most part they are unseen and unnoticeable. We take them completely for granted. And yet we are either walking in and out of them and or are opening and closing them for various reasons and applications all day long. We wake up and we go through the bathroom door. We leave the bathroom door and we exit the bedroom door. We go to the kitchen and we open up the cabinet door and we swing open the refrigerator door. Or perhaps on our way out, we, we pop open the microwave door. We walk through our front door into our car door. We back out of our closet door. We go into our garage door. And all day long we're trafficking in and out of doors. And we're doing so mechanically and we're doing so mindlessly throughout the day. No matter where we are or what it is we're doing. Whether it's our workplace, whether it's our school environment, whether it's an office or a restaurant or any other place of business that you and I might find ourselves trafficking in and out of without a second thought, we are going through doors all day long. I would venture to say this morning that you and I are met with more doors in a given day than what we realize. I would, I would put you to the test to say, try to count over the course of the day how many doors you go through. Even this morning, we, we got out of our car door, walked into the church door. Perhaps many of you have been in and out of the sanctuary doors or the bathroom doors. Even while you're in the house of God, we'll walk out of these doors and into the car door and into our home door through the front door of our house. But I would venture to say again that we are met with more doors than what we realize. Now, the doors that I've referenced thus far, those are literal doors. But doors can also be referred to, uh, whether they be uh, metaphorically referenced and or figuratively spoken of, in respects also to opportunities. Perhaps we've heard phrases like this, this product is going to open up new doors for us. Those of us that are working in sales environments, a new product comes out. And man, it's going to open up new doors of opportunity. We've heard it said of some that when the door of opportunity opened to them, they ran through it and they've become extremely successful. Or perhaps maybe like this, someone has said, if at all possible, do you think that you can get me in the door at your job? Can you get me hired on? Is there a place for me where you're employed? Now, a door, by definition, it provides a, mean of, a means of access and or participation. A door acts as a barrier by which entry is either opened and or closed. That is the true definition of a door. So whether we are speaking literally or whether in a figurative sense or even a spiritual sense, doors provide a barrier a barrier and they're either opening or they are closing before us all day long, whether they are in the realm of the seen or the unseen. And rarely do doors capture our attention until that moment that you and I attempt to enter through 
or to open them up only to discover that we've been denied access. We wake up and we come in and out even here this morning. We don't think twice. We believe that those doors are going to swing open and close behind us. But go through a door that you anticipate being unlocked and all of a sudden pull on it and find that door closed. Now the door has got our attention. And there is nothing more frustrating than to pull or push on a door that you expect to open and experience a failed attempt. To find out that that door is locked. And there is nothing more aggravating, Brother Larte, there is nothing more aggravating than losing your keys. The key to the front door of your house or perhaps losing the key to the door of your vehicle. There, there is nothing more frustrating than that. Can I get an Amen. Anybody that's ever lost their keys. And perhaps as an equal second is the frustration of picking up the wrong set of keys. And having keys in your hand, having it even slip into the lock, but now you go to turn and all of a sudden you find out that you've got the wrong set of keys and you try and try and try to no avail. Now on the flip side of that, there is nothing in this world that will create a sense of panic like being locked in or stuck behind a door with no way to get out. If you're on an elevator, now thank God this has never happened to me because I would lose it. And for those that might be riding that elevator with me, it wouldn't be pretty because I'm afraid of heights. And not the heights, I'm afraid of falling back down to the ground. But could you imagine being on an elevator and all of a sudden stuck in, in an elevator behind a door that won't open between the 30th and 31st floor? Or could you perhaps imagine those of you that may work in the banking industry being in a bank and somehow that vault door closing behind you where nobody can hear you and nobody knows that you're there and being stuck behind the door of a vault? or being stuck in a basement or, or, or a freezer or being stuck somewhere behind a door. Now, now doors, when doors lock, they're locked. They're not maybe locked. They're not partially locked. A door is either unlocked or it is locked. And we've all been there before, standing before closed doors. There are some of us even here today, you, you've gone and you filled out the job application. You've done application after application and you think to yourself after surveying and reading all of the qualifications, this is a sure thing. There is no doubt I've got the experience, I've got the education and the interviews, it went fabulous. And they tell you there is nothing, you are exactly who and what we are looking for. But all of a sudden, what seems to be an open door, it's a door that remains closed. Because you hear nothing, you never hear back from them, and all of a sudden, there's no return phone call, and you're standing once again before a closed door that seems to be a door that is bolted closed. Perhaps you're in this position, where you're cutting corners every place that you can. You're trimming your budget every way that you know how. But month after month after month, there's never enough money. Only closed doors. Phone call after phone call. Meeting after meeting. Interview after interview. School application after school application. Meal after meal trying to diminish the calories. And it's nothing but a closed door. Nothing seems to be budging the scales not budging your checkbook balance isn't budging nothing is moving in your life you're pushing you're pulling but nothing seems to be responding or moving and we feel as though we're stuck in a spiritual sense there are people here this morning that are in this category you've picked up the key of prayer and you're, you're trying to turn the key of prayer, but nothing. You're praying everything you know to pray. 
You're praying every combination of words. Perhaps you're praying the word. You're coming up with every, every sense of colorful and flowery words of the vocabulary to get something to move in your life. You cannot conjure up enough faith and you're searching and trying hard to believe. But time after time, nothing seems to be opening. The key of fasting. We are now into the year. We kicked off the week of consecration. But there's a though, there are those of us that are exercising the discipline of prayer and fasting. And we're turning that key of fasting week after week. But nothing seems to be the result. No matter whether you write that focus down. Whether you're prophesying the result. You're wanting to see. Perhaps those of us, we've got the key of giving in our hand. It's inserted into the lock. We're giving, but nothing. The barrel is empty. There's no oil in the cruise. And we're doing everything that we know to do. But every key, one after the next, seems to be the wrong key. We come into church and we push song after song. We pull service after service. We're trying to shove something in the spirit realm to happen in your life. Sermon after sermon, day after day, week after week, month after month, season after season. It seems that no matter how hard we're trying and how spiritually we're striving to become as God's children, children that were only encountering locked doors and we ask ourselves God maybe you've not asked yourself this but I have God what are we doing wrong God where are you aren't these the right keys I've inserted them into the lock I've even turned the lock but God the door is stuck God why can't I get a breakthrough why are doors not opening for me? I'm qualified. I'm experienced. I'm educated. I'm trying to do all the right things. God, we're trying to give it our all. We're doing everything we know to do and we're doing it with excellence. We're putting our best foot forward. We're making sure that our sixth hand is the best effort that we can possibly give. We're loving people. We're practicing. We're praying. We're doing everything that we know to do. But maybe, maybe this morning, maybe it's just life. Maybe it's just life. Maybe it's just not time because the Bible teaches you and I that, that to everything there is a season. Or perhaps maybe there is an enemy that is invisibly trying to barricade the door on the other side whereby when we try to go through it, we cannot forsake of the resistance that is opposing us. I want to tell you that no matter what the, no matter what the current reality, no matter what it is that you're standing before, no matter what door, a literal door, a metaphoric door, a figurative door, a spiritual spiritual door I want to tell you today at the POLR that Jesus Christ said and has promised that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it he didn't say I build a building of brick and mortar my brothers and my sisters we are the church of the living God and Jesus promised that he would build us and upon the rock of revelation he said I will build my church there's no force in hell there's no demon there's no devil there's no enemy there's no power that can hold back that door because God said I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it he said to Peter Peter I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom so God does give his children keys but ultimately we must understand today who holds not the keys but the key the master key to your life's door and when we understand who decides when the doors open and how far or how long the doors remain closed, then we will have a certain peace about us. God has the master key.
in my pocket this morning every time I come into the house of God I've got this key this is a master key many people have keys to various doors in this sanctuary but there are some that have a master key and in God's pocket 24 7 there is no door that this key can't get into at 17 700 and I want to tell you that God who's walking beside you sitting beside you today he has got Got the key that will give you entrance and enable you to usher you through every and any door in your life that God wants you to go through when God decides it's time and when God says when you will get through that door in our opening text today Jesus the word says that these things saith he that is holy that is true who has the key of David we have to get to the place where you and I understand and where we believe that it is God's perfect will God's perfect will for you and I to fulfill our created purpose to become everything every one of us here today to become everything that God has created you and I to be. It is God's perfect will that we enter our God-ordained destiny, that we reach our fullest potential, that we reap the harvest in our Lee Road community, that we evangelize our family and our neighbors. It is God's perfect will that this church grow numerically and grow and multiply both spiritually and in every other way. And we have been, we have been pushing, we have been pulling, we have been serving, we have been loving, we have been knocking and asking and seeking, and we have been doing everything that we know to do at this juncture of our spiritual journey but again I say that it is Jesus Christ that decides the where and the when and the timing and the results are in his control they're in his control the spiritual doors Paul said it like this he said I planted and Apollos watered but it's God that gives the increase. In other words, it's God alone that possesses the key that has the power to unlock the potential in the seed. Our job is to just keep putting the key in the door and keep trying to turn the lock. But it's God who decides when and how he will open it and to what degree. And so he said in Revelation 3 and 20. Now, I want to look at, at an opposing view for a moment because this is not the kind of a door that we're standing before. In Revelation 3 and 20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man hears my voice, let him come and open the door. Now, the, the implication is this, that you and I are the ones who are controlling and have access to the lock on this door. That God somehow is on the outside and knocking and we're the ones that are in control and hold the power of decision. However, in our opening text today in the book of Revelation, Jesus reveals the reversal. He said this is a different kind of a door. These are the doors that God alone is in full control of. Because there is a door to our heart. And there is a doorway to our lives that we either let God in or we shut God out. It's called the free will of human beings. But God is not talking about that kind of a door. He's talking about a door that he has full control over the threshold. And he's the only one that holds the key. That is why he said to the church at, Ephesus, at Philadelphia, he said, he that openeth, he opens, and no man closes. He shuts a door. And there's not a human being on the face of this earth, no matter how hard they pray, no matter how long they fast, no matter how much they give, there are certain doors that God shuts that no man has the power to open. And the implication in this scripture setting is that God is the one who decides. He's the one who has access to the lock and is in control of the portal, if you will. It's a spiritual door. And God said to Noah, 
He said, I want you to build the ark and set a door in it. But notice, all Noah could do was build the door and stand before the door. But it was God that would shut the door. And once God shut the door, Noah could not open the door because it was a spiritual doorway that God controlled the destiny and the timing of that door to be opened. The spiritual door. God, I'm telling this church that God is not on the outside knocking. That we are standing before open doors. The apostle Paul said it like this. He said, I behold, I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. He said, because there is a great door and effectual opened unto me. What the Apostle Paul was writing was simply this. He said, I cannot leave. Because he recognized his moment of opportunity. He sensed that a door was open that he could not walk past unless he walked through it. Paul said, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to jump the gun. I'm not going to preempt God. He said, this is no time for me to get distracted. This is no time for me to go about in my own will. And I want to tell somebody here today, this is no time time to quit this is no time to walk away this is no time to grow weary this is no time to be unfaithful this is no time to throw in the towel this is not the time to stop praying this is not the time to stop fasting this is not the time to stop giving and stop worshiping this is not the time to hang your harp on the willow tree and suck your thumb this is no time to stop serving this is no time to get off the I think I can train this is the time that God has determined that is an open door before us and I don't know about you and I don't know who but all I know is that I'm going through the open door that is set before us in 2018 and to the Pentecostals I want to tell you that we are standing before an open door in the spirit in the Holy Ghost there is an open door And Paul said, this great door and effectual is opened unto me. But he said, when I approach this door, this great door, Paul said uh, that at the threshold, uh, there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries. You see, we've got to understand this morning. First, we've got to notice and realize that there is a door. Secondly, we've got to realize that it's a great door. And when God opens it, there's not a single man on the face of this earth that can shut it but in order to go through it we may have to overcome some obstacles there may be some spiritual resistance because at this open door at this open door there are adversaries and sometimes it's not a spiritual adversary sometimes the determining factor whether or not we cross over lies within us because there's some of us it's okay brother Danny there's some of us that can be looking at an open door but because of disappointments because of dysfunctions in our thinking in our paradigm because of of missed opportunities there are some of us because of our fears and our doubts and our unbelief and there are some of us for various reasons that when we approach the door we've got a spiritual phobia there's literally a phobia that people have that sometimes they, they, they can't even cross over a threshold and they're stuck in their homes and they're stuck behind closed doors because they don't have what it takes for sake of the phobia to walk through into the next dimension there are many adversaries but Paul said that there is a great and effectual door opened unto us we get hung up and we fail to cross the threshold into the next dimension Jesus wrote, told John to write to the angel of the church, the pastor of the church and the assembly of God. He said, you can, I'm telling you that you can feel 
if you have your spiritual antennas out that there is something very different in the air here at Lee Road in 2018. I am telling you under the unction of the Holy Ghost and with a prophetic anointing that rests upon my life that this is our year of the open door. We are standing to every one of you individually and to this church corporately. We are standing before an open door. This year is going to be a barrier breaking year. This year, every prophetic promise and every prophetic projection is going to be shattered if you and I walk across the threshold of the door, the open door. To this church family, we have got to own one. We've got to own it. Because to own it is to walk through the open door. We have got to live and own one reason and understand why we're one. We have got to own and surrender ourselves to the reinvention process that the Holy Spirit is trying to take us through. We have got to own our reach. That's why the ropes are going to be on this altar reminding you and I that there's one more we've got to be reaching for. At least reaching. And we've got to have the understanding of the results that we're after. The open door. We've already seen it. There are already more Bible studies being taught. There are baptisms that are taking place. People are being renewed and filled for the first time with the Holy Ghost. Prodigals are returning. Guests are deciding to make this church their home. We have got to live it and we have got to embrace it if we're ever going to walk into it in terms of what God God possesses for us on the other side of the open door. You can feel it even this morning as soon as we get begin to pray and give way to the Holy Ghost. There's an open door. The liberty, the undercurrent, the anointing, the power that is in before that is, is before us because God has set us before an open door that no man can shut. No man can shut it. In the NLT version, Deuteronomy 1 and 21, God said to them, Look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. He said to Israel, Don't be afraid and don't be discouraged. They were standing, if you will, before the proverbial open door into the land of promise. They were at the threshold of access. They were standing there. And what was to take only 11 days, it wound up taking 40 years because they were at a place called Kadesh Barnea, a doorway into the land that flowed with milk and honey. But for failure to walk through that open door, door they wandered and wandered and wandered and again I'm intentionally sounding a clear sound and a clear alarm and I'm letting us know today corporately and individually that we are standing before an open door God for many of us if not all of us he is opening up the door to promise he is opening the door to possibility there are some of you that God has opened up the door of destiny. He's opening up a door in your finances, a door in terms of a doorway of hope and healing and restoration and deliverance and power and favor to this church, a doorway of harvest and life itself. Life itself, a doorway, but no one could stop them but themselves. And God said to them, he said, okay, if you'll walk through this door, when you walk through this door, he said, I'm going to go before you. And I'm going to take the fear of me and put it on you. He said, and every opposing enemy, every adversary that stands at the open door, I'm going to destroy them. And I'm going to make them fear you and tremble. And the Bible reveals that little by little, little by little, God said, I'm going to drive out your enemy until you're increased and until you inherit the promises. And POLR today, 
we must decide whether or not we are going to allow the open door remain open and just stare at it and look at it or whether or not we're going to go through it. Are we going to let the moment pass us by or are we going to walk through that door and take advantage of what God has opened to us that no man has the power to shut. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep fasting. We're going to keep preaching truth. We're going to keep teaching the word. We're going to keep worshiping and serving and giving and reaching and inviting and planting and watering. And if we do, God is going to give us the increase. God is going to give us the increase. And what we've got to understand today is that Jesus Christ, he said, I am the door. He said, I am the door. As you stand with me all over this house, God said, I am the door. There are some of us here today, we're locked behind doors of addiction. There are some of us here today, we've been locked for years behind doors of, of infirmity. We've been locked behind doors of fear. We've been locked behind doors of spiritual blindness. We've been locked behind doors of stubbornness. We've been locked behind doors of hopelessness. We've been locked behind doors of insecurity. We have been locked behind doors of oppression and depression and we feel as though there's no way out. We feel like we're in a prison because we've been standing behind a door trying to get it open for so long and we can't do it but when God opens up the door when God opens up the door God he opens up the door and he barricades it open and no man can shut this door there are some of us we've been living behind doors of poverty we've been living behind doorways of, of mediocrity and I'm here to tell you today that whatever you got to do don't look at the adversary don't look at what's trying to keep you from going across the threshold just know that if you walk through on the other side of mediocrity there's abundance on the other side of fear there's peace on the other side if you will of the doorway of addiction that there's deliverance that whatever it is that's holding you back whatever it is that's opposing you know that God has opened up that door and when God opens it no man could shut it and keep you back and this is what I'm prophesying today and it's my hope and my desire that every single person in this house walk through that door today that's my desire but it's your decision and I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost I'm telling you this church and every person that's here today member or guest alike in the spirit of the living God that if you will walk through this door with the right spirit and the spiritual mindset there are people Lisa where are you there are people you're going to go through that doorway and God's going to open up the right door. It's not that you've done anything wrong. It's nothing you've done. But I'm telling you that God is going to open a door that no man can shut and no man's going to interfere with and no man can do anything about it. I'm prophesying to those of you that have been behind doors of poverty and a pov an impoverished mindset. There are those of you that have been living with oppression and depression. And I'm not giving you a bunch of hype. If God don't do it, that's up to God. I'm telling you what I felt all week long. And I fought hell this week. I have fought hell this week. To pay a price. Let's receive that all over this house. Let's receive the gift of tongue and interpretation. Let's receive the word from God. For somebody it may be a doorway of salvation. 
for someone baptism today in the name of Jesus Christ is going to be your doorway as you come up out of that water and you enter into the newness of life but for every one of us today here pastor what I'm telling you I have fought what seems to be like the beast of Ephesus but I'm telling you in the spirit of God and those of you that have been around a long time you know I'm not hyping you up but I'm believing that when you walk through this door when you walk through this threshold I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost something is going to happen to you something's going to fall off of you you may not fully understand it today but in the course of the next few days you're going to look around and say what's different what's different brother Gary Nixon come up here right now I'm telling you you have been faced with nothing but closed doors we need a new opportunity we need something to break and you're looking for it. You go through that open door in the name of Jesus. He There's some of you you've been battling. He There's some of you you need a new dimension. You need a new dimension in the Holy Ghost. You need a new dimension in your finances. You need God to do a miracle. You're going to go through this door and you're never going to be the same again. It's an open door. It's an open door. It's an open door. Healing, deliverance, hallelujah, freedom, peace, hope. In the name of Jesus, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Men of God, help me. Come on. Come on. That's it, Brother Danny. Go to the door for your family. Go to the door for your family. Go to the door for your healing. Go to the, the door for your miracle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We stand before an open door. Heavenly Father. That's it, Petra. You're, that's it. You need it. You need it for your family. You need it for your family for a next spiritual dimension an open door come as husband and wife there are some marriages there are some marriages you need to come through this door as a husband and wife there are some of you you need a fresh touch from God God's going to give you a job God's going to give you a raise God's going to set you free God's going to heal you God's going to deliver you in the name of Jesus, He Let the Holy Ghost have its way. There are some of you coming through. You're coming through that doorway. You're going to come into a new realm of peace, a new realm and a sense of belonging. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, once you go through the door, let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let God have His way. It's more than just a natural. There's a spiritual, a spiritual dimension.
telling you, we're never going to be the same again. We're crossing the doorway. We're stepping over the threshold of transition. There's things happening and transpiring in the Holy Ghost that are going to change the landscape of your life. When you come across that door, life's not going to be the same. The landscape's not going to look the same. You're not going to walk the same, talk the same, think the same, see the same, feel the same. I want everybody through that door. Come on, God. This is not a door man has opened. This is not the door of the church. This is a doorway that God Almighty is opening up to the POLR and every person that steps into this sanctuary and that is here today or watching via the web. If you're watching via the web, I want you to find a doorway in your home and I want you to walk through that doorway in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm telling you that the anointing that rests upon this door here in this service is going to fall upon you at home. I loose you. I plead the blood over you. I send you in the name of Jesus. Walk by the word over the threshold of that doorway in your home right now. In your home right now. Those listening in their vehicle when you step out of your car you may be driving right now when you step out of that car and you step onto that ground and you leave the wheel of that vehicle I'm telling you something in the Holy Ghost is going to transpire in your life in the name of Jesus and by the authority of His Word
if you want your ministry to go to a new level, walk through into that realm as you come through again. If you're in Sunday school, you're on the praise team, sound, media, whatever it is. If you want your preaching, your teaching, if you want your anointing, your influence to go to a new dimension, I'm telling you that open door is a greater dimension. The open door is not a lesser dimension. It's a greater dimension. Go through that door again. Go through 20 times if you need to. But know that God has set before you an open door and no man can shut that door. That's a Holy Ghost door. Some of you, you're stepping out of the wilderness and into the promise. You're stepping out of sickness into healing. You're stepping out of poverty into riches. You're stepping out of failure into success. I'm telling you that when you come over that doorway, you're leaving one dimension behind forever and going into another realm. You're stepping out of fear and into peace. You're stepping out of timidity into boldness. You're stepping out of dryness into anointing. You're stepping out of addiction into freedom and liberty. I feel strongly there are marriages, husbands and wives. You've got to come through that door together. You're one flesh. You're one flesh. Husbands and wives. You've got to go through that door together. We need our elders to go through that door. We need our children to go through that door. P-O-L-R, we are stepping out of one dimension in time and going into another realm of reinvention. It's a realm of reinvention. No man left behind. No man left behind. If you want to walk through the doors of baptism, we have water. We'll baptize you in Jesus' name today. If you need the Holy Ghost, you talk about a portal leaving the earthly into the heavenly. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you want your singing anointing, your praying anointing, your teaching anointing, your anointing to go to a new level, walk through that door. It's an open door. It's Jesus. He said, I am the door. You're walking through Christ in and out into greater pasture, in and out into greater opportunity, into greater possibility, into greater power, into greater power. I'm telling the POLR, we're not going to live in yesteryear. I'm telling you, we're not going to live in what was. We're going to step into what can be. I prophetically declare it over this church. We're walking into a new realm of what can be. We're not living in what was. God's going to strengthen us. But then we're walking into what lies ahead in the full promise of God. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. He called I'm telling you, there's some of you, your life is never going to be the same again. You think, all oh, that's silly. I'm telling you, it's not silly. It's spiritual. And there's something transpiring in the Holy Ghost. There's something transpiring in the Spirit. It's not silly. You're never going to be the same again. I'm not dismissing this service. I want us to keep playing. I'm not dismissing. You stay as long as you want to stay. Because God's doing great things in these altars. God's working miracles. We love you. God bless you. But you keep worshiping and keep praising and praying. God's doing a deep work. God bless you. If you got to go, we love you. Tomorrow night prayer. Let's walk through the open door of prayer tomorrow night. Let's not let these altars be empty. Hallelujah.